All right, guys, today we've got one of these basic Plain Jane Amana uh, electric dryers, which is built by Whirlpool. And the problem we're having today is uh, we have heat here, and obviously no heat here. I, th I think this one works fine. We'll check it here in a second. But the issue with this dryer is that there's no heat on automatic dry. And uh, the person that I got this from kind of went through all the... Um, uh, little switches and stuff on the back, thermostats, all that. I'll show you here in a sec. Said, all that's good. And so they just kind of done with it, assumed it's a timer. Probably is a timer. We're going to double check everything. But uh, let me show you what we've got going on here. So hit go. I've got the back off so we can see everything. We look down at that little hole there. You see it heating. Get nice and hot and if I move the timer around up here so typically if this were the heating issue and you didn't have heat you could do a timer test by forcing it one way or the other and what would happen is you go this way and it would turn on you go this way and it would turn off and that's how you know you have a bad connection here it doesn't matter what I do time dry stays working so if we just quickly switch over here you see it immediately shuts off nothing that I do up here is affecting it at all. There's just zero heat on this automatic drive. So we're going to get into it. Now since we have heat, we know this is not the issue. We know this is not the issue. And uh, it's possible this could be the issue. So here, this bottom thermostat here. So we're going to check that and then we're gonna get into the timer up here. And essentially I'm gonna show you how to pull that apart and what you'd wanna look for on the inside. So I'm gonna use some curved needle nose pliers. Of course, I'm not gonna to touch anything with it plugged in. I'm not gonna shock myself, but there's a little clip on top right there that you compress with pliers and there's one on the bottom. It's kind of a pain to get to. And then that just pops off once you take the, the knob off the front. So that's what we're going to do. First, we're going to check that with my um, uh, multimeter and make sure that it's got continuity and reads resistance on the purple right there. Okay, so I pulled the connections off. And we're going to check this. We're good to go here. Using these little alligator clips. So... I could do this one-handed. Go ahead and check this. I'm gonna switch my gauge over to resistance. And I think in the past, this reads somewhere between seven and eight and is correct, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. I, You know, I don't think I've ever replaced one of these in all the years that I've been doing this. I've never actually had this be the issue. Yeah, that's fine. And that's what I remember the resistance needing to be, just up over seven. So this is fine. And I kind of figured it was a timer issue, but just wanted to be sure this would obviously be a lot easier to replace first if it was the issue. So I'm gonna put this back together. Doesn't matter which way these go back on, as long as they're on there. And we're gonna bust into that timer. Now, if you're not familiar with this, set up the wires and stuff, I would definitely recommend taking a picture of the timer up here. Now this one, it's uh, it's pretty easy. I mean, there's a, all this stuff has plugins. You know exactly where it's gonna go. Some of them don't have these and these are all just loose wires. In that case, you definitely wanna take a picture of this before you pull this off and get started, but we will take this off the front. I'm gonna grab my needle nose pliers and compress that and this will pop off and then the other one's under here so I'll take all this off and we'll pull this thing off. All right now here's our timer it was up there like this so this side these contacts are typically for time dry high heat these contacts over here are for your automatic dry and so we're going to be looking at those once we get inside the only thing we need to do is take out these two Phillips head screws and I don't recommend using a drill just use a Regular Phillips head screwdriver, you don't want to blow out this stuff with an impact or a drill. And somebody's already been into this, so it'll be interesting to see what we get when we get in here. So I'm going to have to 
secure that once I plug that back in there. Maybe put a little tape over it or something. Maybe even just a spot of glue to keep it on there. All right, lighting is not great, but I did find something to hold the phone for me. So just going to move all that out of the way. Get some room to work here. So I've loosened these up. This is going to pop off. Now this is just going to separate here like that. Now we're on the inside and what we're looking for is we're looking for some burnout contacts or something that would explain why we're not getting heat when we switch over to that automatic cycle. So let's see here. Okay, so this over here is kind of what I'm looking at. And these contacts, they're not terrible. Not bad enough that I'd be like, oh, that's definitely why it's not working. Let's come over here. Those also not terrible. Honestly, none of this is really that bad that I would be like, this is this is definitely the reason why it's not working. I mean, it's it's not to say that it's not the reason. So what I'm going to do, I mean, that, what, this one right here on this center post, that's pretty dark. And so it could be that there's just nothing happening here. And I could have and should have tested that with my uh, multimeter, but that's okay. We're in here. We're going to clean that up. I mean, you probably can't see it, but that's, that's pretty dark in there. That could be the issue. So what I've got and what I like to use on these is either this one little file you can get these at any hardware store like Westlakes or any mom and pop shop should have them and this one so I'll use those two and essentially all we're gonna do is we're just gonna reach in here like this we're just gonna shine these back up and it's just kind of tedious so I'm just gonna get in there and shine it up so it's nice and shiny and I'll, I'll go ahead and do all of these contacts while I'm in here. I'm not gonna take any of this out. I'm gonna leave that exactly the way it is. Um, you know, maybe you took yours all apart and you're not sure it goes back together. There you go, that's what it's supposed to look like and some of these stack here in case you're just trying to figure out how to put it back together. But uh, there's a good shot. You know, we'll do every side, every angle for you. I've been in that situation many times and just looking for a video to show me what it's supposed to look like. So I'll go ahead and clean these up and we'll see if that makes a difference and I'll show you how to put it back together. Okay, we've gone through, cleaned all the connections. You can see that there, they're all nice and polished now. Shiny, just takes a little time. I went ahead and I just did every single connection in here. So everything's nice and clean. Now this guy here, it only goes on one way. So yeah, let's see, not like that. Like that, like that. Just like that, it's nice, nice and flush. So you know you got it on right. Same thing with this, cut these out. The bigger red one goes on the white side. I'm trying to stay centered on the camera. Okay, pop these back in here, like so. Not going to over tighten this, just kind of get it snug. Okay. Grab the knob and give this a couple turns just to make sure everything's seated the way it's supposed to be. All right, let's go put this back on and see if it makes a difference. Okay, all we did to get it back in, we just pushed it back in place and your little clips here, top and bottom, snap back into place. Plug my wires back in. Uh, I've plugged the dryer back in. We got our knob back on. We've got it set here, more dry on the high heat, automatic dry. So really moment of truth here. We're gonna see Get any heat down in here. And we are not 
getting any heat. So let's do the little timer test. Let's try shifting this to the right. Shifting it to the left. All right, we're back in the timer. Now looks can be deceiving. By looking at this, I would have guessed that these were fine. However, I got my meter hooked up again. And we go under here. Now, according to this, these three here should be touching, should be fine. So if I touch this one, connection. Now, no connection, no connection. So the problem is our old friend, this piece here, this white plastic piece. I have done another video. See if I push that up a little bit, makes a connection. I release and it doesn't. I've done another video on how to fix that. So here's my opportunity to update this video with how I fix it now. And I'll show you an easier, faster way to fix this issue. So this is the same issue that would cause it not to heat over on just your time dry. And what we're gonna have to do here, is we are gonna have to take some things apart. So we're going to, first things first, let's just kind of wiggle this little thing out. Hold on, let's get this out of here. Return this so it's not spring loaded anymore. There we go, a little bit easier to do. Let's take this top one off. Just be kind of careful, try not to bend anything. But uh, okay, we got that off. Now this thing can come out. All right, that allows us to get to this guy right here. And the problem with this is that little groove right there. See how there's a groove that's worn into it. Now what I used to do is I used to heat this up and bend it so that this reached up a little bit further. I don't do that anymore. Now what I do, is I will take this, I clean it real good, and I'll dip this in baking powder, and then I drop some super glue right on top of it. And I kid you not, it creates like a little pebble rock where that plastic used to be. And I'll kind of smooth it out if I need to, a little sand it down and make sure it's nice and flush again, and it's good to go. And I have, I've run one like that for a year and a half without any issues, taking it back apart with hardly any wear back in it. So, um, it's a new method, works really well, and it works way better than bending, trying to heat this up and bend it, which is what I used to do. So uh, I'm going to do that. That's very hard to do one-handed. It's super late. Uh, well, actually, it's early in the morning now. Everybody's sleeping. So I'm going to try to be as quiet as I can, sneak in there and steal some super glue. And All right. Got to be quiet. I got little kids sleeping. I, I said baking powder. It's actually baking soda. What I'm going to do... I'm just going to take a little bit of it here and dump it right on top there. Just kind of fill that little gap there. Okay. Okay, see how, hopefully you can see that. See, it's got it in the little gap. I need two hands, but now I'm going to take my super glue. I use this stuff all the time. I'm just going to put one tiny little drop right on top there. And the two mix together, and it's super strong. All right, got the little glob of super glue on there. And we're going to take some more of this. Just drop it right on top. I just like to completely cover it up at this point. Okay. And so now we'll go back out there with the file. I'll give it like a minute or two. And I'll show you what it looks like after I clean it up. All right, so put it on there. And just kind of repeat the process, dropping a little glue, putting a little more uh, baking soda, smoothing it out, and repeat the process if needed. But it comes out perfectly flush and super strong. 
All right. Now, let's move this out of the way. Let me show you how to put this thing back together. First thing that I do is I will put this back in. That one right there seats in pretty easily. So I leave that one in, pop that in here. And let's see, this one goes up top, goes in last. So then I believe it's, first one that needs to go back in is our repaired piece. Just wanna put that in. Now these are kind of spring loaded, so what you gotta do is just kind of pull up. And what I will do is I'll take my little tool here just kind of hold this up so that I can slip this all the way back in and down where it's supposed to go. Oh wait, I think maybe I'm putting it on. Nope, I had it on the right one. I'm just fighting against my little circular guy here so let's turn this to its lowest point there there we go and I just had to get it to a, the right point on the wheel holding this up and it slipped all the way down right where it's supposed to be now and I didn't have to force it once it was in place so now there's enough room on this one to put this guy back in place Okay, this same kind of thing here. Grab this, push it up high enough so that this can slip all the way down where it's supposed to be. And sometimes turning it can help it there. I turned it just a little bit and it clicked right into place. You can tell it's on there right, and it's on the right little section of the wheel it's supposed to be on. Okay, this was our last one. It goes down here. It also clicked right into place. There shouldn't be but just a tiny little nub of black left over. And if you took this one out, that's how that one goes in. Okay. And then what I'll do once I get to this point is I'll just take the knob, put it back on, and kind of from the side here, make sure everything's clicking the way it's supposed to. Okay, see we're getting the movement on all three sides. Looks like we're supposed to. Okay, so we'll take this back off. And we're gonna once again reassemble, just like we did before. It goes the other way. Like that. Just like that. All right, and we're gonna go put it back on and cross our fingers and hope that this works. If it doesn't, we're gonna find a really steep hill and that'll be a different video. All right, we are all put back together. We're all plugged in. Timer set where it's supposed to be. We're gonna hit go. And let's take a look down our little Highly recommend not touching anything while it's plugged in. Look at that. Nice bright red. So that was the issue. It was the timer. We just had to go a second round and take the meter out to figure it out. And I, I guess I should have known. It is the most common issue with these timers. It just typically affects time drive. Uh, however, in this case, this was working fine still, and this over here wasn't working, but now everything is working, 
and we got it fixed and it's good to go. So I really hope this video helps somebody out. You're trying to get your dryer up and running again. Hopefully it'll save you some time, save you some money. I'll try to cut this video down so it's not super long. But uh, if you did find it valuable and informative, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out. And uh, like and share the video. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a great day.